The other day I was scrolling on TikTok and I came across a video saying the last day of 2023 is going to be a Sunday and the first day of 2024 is a Monday, meaning Sunday, December 31st would be the final and best Sunday reset of 2023. The ultimate Sunday reset, if you will, perchance, mayhaps. As soon as I saw that, I knew what I needed to do. This year has been long, difficult, and I want to leave a lot of things behind in the previous year as I look forward into my future envisions. So I sought out to prepare my own personal ultimate Sunday reset, and in this video I will be going through the deep cleans, the uncluttering's, self-care, reflections, and goal settings. Before we continue, I want to say that I pretty obviously didn't do all of this in one day since I wanted to get this video out on the last day of 2023, so I gave myself a week to fulfill this ultimate reset. I hope this video gives you inspirations to clear out, cleanse, and reflect on the previous year as we prepare for the future one or just any transitional time in your period. There is no better time to start than the present. With that being said, let's get into it. Welcome to my closet. We are going through my closet today. This is my closet. It's small. I share half of it with my husband. I'm not going through that one. I'm sharing. I'm going through my side. I have a lot of shit. I have a lot of clothes. I have a lot of shoes. This is really scary. And I really want to just like get rid of all of it. I made a pile on my bed. This pile over here is the ones that I know that I'm keeping. I don't have to try it on. I've worn them before, but then I have a pile here. I'm gonna try them on. I'm gonna see if I need to like get rid of them, which I most likely will. And then we'll carry on. sections of my closet are traditional Indian clothes because I'm married to an Indian man and I just have them so I'm not gonna get rid of those obviously but I do need to put them just together and in a better section <laughs> also I just pulled out this magnificent black robe that I forgot that I had and I really need to wear it more often because this is sick also cloak wow okay she's empty over here so another section of my closet I have is various bags and containers filled with things. Um, this one specifically is filled with a bunch of dance stuff, like leotards and tights and things, but I don't know if it's all leotards and tights and things, so I'm going to have to go through it. So now I'm going to make another pile of all the bags that I have to go through. I have not worn these shoes at all, um, but I could possibly, and I don't know when. I also have various purses that I cycle out, but don't really have good storage for them. So they're gonna go on a bed. Also, I'm definitely not doing this the weekend that I'm uploading this, but just pretend, pretend that I'm doing all of this in one day. But that would drive me insane. Okay, here we go. So, oops. this is dance stuff, more shoes, more hats that I don't wear. Should I get rid of that? I don't know. 
In this bag is a book that my mom made for me when I was younger. Pictures of my parents when they were pregnant with me and um, my mom finished it and gave it to me last year for Christmas or for my birthday, I can't remember. Another bag. This is a bunch of jewelry. Please don't fall, please don't fall, please don't fall. Okay, 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 we're making progress. Now we have to deal with this. Problem with storing suitcases is that I would love to use this for storage for like hats or jewelry or things like that, but when I have to use it, I have to take all of that out and then where do I put it? I have though other things that I can use besides this suitcase, so I think I am going to turn this one into jewelry storage, jewelry and hat storage. These slippers have been in here for a really long time and they look absolutely disgusting. And then this is all yarn, which I don't need in here. I shouldn't have it in here. Ring light that I never use. And then my pants, which I kind of just want to take all the way out and sweep down here. Oh, I can't get out my door because you're in front of it. Shit. Well, this is what we're looking like so far. I don't think I need to necessarily try any of these on because I have a pretty good idea, but I do need to go through them. I want to hang on to these so bad, but I think they're going to be a no because they don't fit my waist anymore. And if I put them up here, they're like high waters. They're not long at all. They're comfy, but they're just, eh. I'm putting them in a maybe pile. These are a yes, are a yes. These are a yes. These are a yes. These are a yes, but don't belong in here. Both of these are yeses, and why are they so dusty? This is my husband's. Pair of shorts, yes. These jeans are a yes. No. No. I've never worn these out, but they're so cute, and I want to wear them, so I'm gonna keep them. And I know that they fit me. I don't know when that stopped recording, but I made the yes and no piles for pants, so we're gonna put them in. Okay, that went pretty easy. Next, we're going to do jewelry. The problem with this is that I need to have some things be accessible, but most of these I can put away because I only wear them for like weddings and special events. And I'm just gonna go through, see, here's the other issue. If I put this shit away, I will forget that I have it. So if I wanna wear it, I have to leave it out. Okay, then we're gonna put this back here. Okay, 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 we're making progress, okay! Also, don't say shit about my hair. I do not have it styled. I literally just decided that I was gonna do this. Anyway, the plan for up here is to display bags and shoes. I'm going through my purses and to be honest, I kind of want to sell both of these because they're not really my style anymore and I'm shifting my wardrobe into wearing more black again. I think I'm going to keep this one because it's really cute and I could possibly see myself using it in the future. It's guess, it's in good condition, it's quilted, it's maroon. But this one, I do not see myself wearing or using. I should sell this one. As for this one, I'm going to display her up here. So I remember her existence. I would love to keep this piece out, but I have a dust bag and I want to keep it in good condition. My mother-in-law gave me this Valentino purse um, a couple years back and it fits a lot of things. I barely use it. I barely, barely use it, but she's cute. She's just a cute structured purse. I do, however, want to keep her in her dust bag because I want to it's Valentino. I don't know what that means. So she's going in the bag. Okay, now I'm going to put shoes up here that I want to wear and I want to keep looking nice. 
Okay, I have two pairs of black boots to put up here. These are slouchy, so I just shuffed some t-shirts that I don't wear anymore into the base of them. And then these ones have those things in them. Okay, boots. Yes, mama boots the house down for your nerves work. Um, we're not boots are up there. I'm gonna put my dogs too. Yeah, all right. We're making progress. Now it's time to hang and organize my, organize my hanging things. Take you so you get a better look. You good? Okay, first thing going back is my cloak. Then I'm gonna put all my Indian clothes back here, which is not a lot. I have a lot more um, at my in-laws house, but this is just some stuff that I brought from Washington. Whoa, okay, muscles. Anyway, these are all my dresses and skirts and things, and these are some crochet pieces. Okay, now we're going through the things that I know that I want to, actually, I wanna keep most of these, but like I said, I'm trying to transition my wardrobe into an all black wardrobe because I did that a couple years ago and I really, really loved it and I really felt like myself. I really felt like I was in my style and then for whatever reason, I just wanted, I don't know. I was like, maybe I should incorporate some color into my life and then I hated it. <laughs> most of these are colors, some are black and white. I'm gonna try and shift most of these black ones to the front, I've already said it. But I'm also gonna put the white ones at the front too, but I think most color is going back here. Okay, now we're going to try on things. Actually, not really. We're just going to get rid of things. This is a no. It's a hoodie. It doesn't fit me anymore. Speed running this. Hoodie. I like it. Keeping it. This looks strange, but it's like a yoga jumpsuit, so I'm going to keep this. And I'm getting rid of this one. This jacket doesn't really fit me anymore, but I'm keeping it because I bought it off of Caliucci's Depop, and it's fucking dope, and I could give it to my children one day. This one, on the other hand, I don't really have a use for, and there's paint on the shoulder, so I'm gonna rid of it of my existence. I think I'm gonna put all of my clo my colored clothes into another closet. Ew! Because I don't wanna look at them. Keeping this one because it's really cool. Keeping this because a friend crochet, no, knitted? I don't know. Embroidered, that's the word. The Wheel of Fortune tarot card on it. And I think toss this, it was old Silence Hippie merch. But I don't wear it anymore. I'm keeping this because it's cool in the summer. I'm keeping this because it's nice and cozy. Selling because it doesn't fit anymore and it's just not my style. Get rid of, it's navy blue, it looks black on camera. Keep because this is cute. Sell because when am I gonna wear this? Keep because it's cute. Rapid fire, keeping this blue dress because it's cute. Keeping this white dress because it's cute. Keeping this other white dress because it is also cute. Uh, keeping the pink silky one. It's inside out, that's why it looked weird. Getting rid of this, getting rid of this, keeping this. And here is my finished closet. Beautiful, amazing, organized, and definitely messed up the next day. Hi! Welcome to my kitchen. I'm tackling the kitchen today. That involves Cabinets, counters, appliances, floors, sinks, windowsill, anything else I get to. Uh, yeah. I think I'm gonna start top down, which means I have to start with the cabinets. I'm ignoring other things until further notice. Also, I did straighten my hair, thanks for noticing, and I put on makeup to clean my kitchen. Look good, feel good, do good. I just realized I have to take everything out first. And we do not have a lot of counter space here. Let me put you on a tripod. You are now as tall as my cabinet. Let's see what we're working with. Come here, I'll show you. It's worse. Ew. Ew. So, yeah. I need to find something fun to watch to entertain myself because I just stared at this for a little bit and was like, mm, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. No dopamine involved. I'm at the very liminal stage between Christmas and New Year's in a liminal space filled with a lot of cheese kind of spiraling through the wind. Okay, that took me a good like five minutes to figure out what I was going to watch, 
but I have decided on the new reboot of Kitchen Nightmares to accompany me on this because Gordon Ramsay would not be pleased at the state of this pantry. Let the cleaning begin! That's from one swipe. God dang it. Did you stop recording? Anyway, we cleared off the bottom of the shelf. And this is only one of the one, two, three, four, three cabinets that I'm gonna do. Well, would you look at that? The pantry is clean. I guess I'll give you a tour now. At the top, we have extras of things, extra rice, extra protein bar balls made by my mother-in-law, extra salt, we have popcorn, uh, tinfoil stuff. This is, well, over here is baking, so sugars, spices, cinnamon, that sort of thing. And then we have oils slash vinegars. Then going down, this is like our dry pantry, so nuts, raisins, that sort of thing. And then continuing on, we have all of our pastas and grains, and then our spices and coconut milk. And then down here is like mostly our snack shelf. We don't have really any snacks right now, so I just put the remainder of our snacks into this area, and then peanut butter, honey, coffee, butter. Hey y'all, I wanted to let you know that this is the only other cleaning that I did on this day in my kitchen. Despite listing off all of the things that I could have done, my floors, my counters, ovens, appliances, etc., I really only had the energy to do my cabinets and my dishes. I wanted to let you know that that is okay, and it is okay to give yourself a big task and only complete a few sections of it. This year, something that I really learned was prioritizing my rest and creating realistic goals around my time and my energy so I don't become burnt out or just overly tired later and I can do all of the things that I want to do in the day. Rather than prioritizing all of the cleaning I could possibly do or all of the studying I could possibly do at one time, piecing away at something makes a lot more progress. Well, hello there, welcome back, and welcome to this portion of the video where I will be discussing my reflections of 2023, my goals for the next year, and just general vision board-esque activities. For the past few years now, every turn of the year, I always reflect on what I did and what I accomplished in the previous year, as well as set reasonable goals. That's the important part reasonable goals for the next year. I'm going to give you my guidelines for what I write about, but I'm not going to share my goals and reflections because that's just very personal. I will, however, be showing you my journals that I have set up for the next year and what I plan to do with those. So what I reflect on is three things that I'm proud of, three things that I worked hard on, three things that I struggled with, and three things that I learned in 2023. And then my manifestations and kind of visions for 2024 are going to be four things I'm looking forward to, four things I'm going to work on, four things I want to leave behind, and four things I want to take with me. This can be in a variety of different topics and intensities, like one of your goals for the new year could just be I don't know, making yourself a salad every week or something. Um, it really depends on where you're at and how you want to live your life and how you want to structure your life. I'm very excited to talk about my journals, so let's turn around to my desk and I will show you these guys. Excuse my desk, it is a little bit messy, but I am a maximalist, clutter fiend, sister of the loam. What can I do? These are my two journals that I have set up for the next year. This first one was gifted to me by my mom for Christmas and it is this beautiful leather bound journal. Well, it's actually not leather bound. It has this nice snap here though. This is actually an insert and you can take it out when you're done and refill it. So it's just the leather cover, but it has these really nice brown 
pages in here. I really enjoy this style and I also love that I can reuse this cover. There it is up close. It has a lapis in the center. Gorgeous. This journal is going to be for tarot readings, uh, intentions, dreams, personal like things that I'm dealing with. Just kind of an all around like more spiritual free write journal. Um, not so structured that I have to write in it any day or every day, just when I feel the need to. This is going to be my everyday journal. And this is a journal, it's a Japanese journal, I'm pretty sure, by Midi? Here is the cover. I will link it down below where I found it, but essentially it is really beautifully bound, high quality paper. It's a 365 journal, so it has a page for every day of the year. It's really nice, like it lays flat. And a cool thing about this is that each page has these little perforations in the bottom. And when you're done with the page, you're supposed to rip that page off, that perforation. So I made the first cover, so I took off the corner. Um, I just wrote that this book belongs to me. And since this is going to be an everyday journal, I put some habit tractors, habit trackers, not tractors, <laughs> in the front. So this is a calendar with all of the months and then all of the days. I need to mark off some of the days that months don't have 30 and 31. Um, but here are my workout schedules. This is a cleaning and self-care schedule. And this is going to be my daily journal. I have a little sticker that says diary up there with some leaves. I'm really looking forward to this, especially because my mom gifted me some gel pens that I think will look really beautiful on this paper. I forgot to mention that this is dotted paper. You can't really see, but that is one of my favorite papers styles to write on. So these are my two journals that will be accompanying me in the new year. If you've seen my previous videos, you might have seen my junk journal, which I renew every birthday. So I'm about halfway done, which makes sense because I uh, just turned 26 and a half on December 21st. So this is going to be my other journal, but it's not really like a, a year journal. It's just kind of a very personal um, junk journal. And I have so much shit that I need to put in it, but one thing at a time. Isn't that right, Toady? Yes. Deep cleans and deep clutterings aside, I wanted to talk to you all about the new year and what it means, what weight it can hold for certain people, and how we can shed that and form a better connection with the turn of the year while we are still in the dead of winter. We are we are we are we are, we are well aware. <laughs> We are well aware that the Gregorian calendar starts January 1st and ends December 31st, spanning 12 months and 365 days. However, the turn of the year is always in the dead of winter or the dead of summer for our Southern Hemisphere people, right? Mm -hmm. I'm right. Yes, I am right. There's also a lot of weight put on the new year as a turning point for people to reinvent themselves, reinvent their lives, and just either quit cold turkey or start hot chicken. I don't know what a uh, better analogy for that is, but just start things really suddenly. And it can be a lot of it can hold a lot of weight over people's heads to change miracul miraculously. You get what I'm trying to say though. Hopefully a lot of people's New Year's resolutions don't go on for the whole entire year because it is unhealthy to put on really harsh restrictions or goals right away with this added pressure of going into a new year. Because I know after the holidays, after a treacherous, difficult, terrible year 
The last thing that I really want to do is turn my life around and reinvent myself and do a 75 hard or something like that. And if that's what you want to do and what you thrive on, that is great and amazing. But I am just here to say that doing the opposite is also great and amazing. If right now you need to rest and hibernate, that makes sense against the dead of winter. So do your hibernations, do your reflections, do your goal settings, do what you need to do. Do your everything showers, do your nails, do your makeup if you want to, put on a cute outfit, whatever, or just stay in pajamas all day because that is how I live my life. Whatever you need to do to prepare yourself for the next year. Because while we are in the dead of winter and it's kind of a weird time to take a transition into like a whole other year, it is important to recognize the systems that we are in place of and following. And I think feeling the turn of the, the year, the change in the air can be beneficial for the rest of your year rather than just overlooking it. Well, yeah. I don't really know what else I wanted to say. Um, that pretty much sums it up. Other than, thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy that I returned to YouTube this year and I cannot wait for the next year. What I have in store, what I have planned, what I've reflected on, what I've set my goals on in YouTube and content creating, but also in my life. And maybe in the future we can talk about some astrology, but there has been some really interesting astrology going on, moving officially into the age of Aquarius. As an Aquarius rising, I'm ready. Well, with that, I guess I will say goodbye. I'll see you next year.